Well, hi everyone. I'm here today with Alan Hovda, multiple Norseman winner, massive um, precision hydration ambassador. And today, rather than talking about um, out and out performance, Alan and I were going to have a chat about um, the dreaded DNF that did not finish. Um, and it's something which athletes don't talk about a lot, but something which is is a feature of endurance sport. And there's lots of different opinions on on DNF. You know, there's a there's a saying, sort of used in jest some of the time, but death before DNF. You know, you know, with the with the idea that to be an endurance athlete, you've got to really really push yourself. You've got to push through a lot of pain and and get to the finish, whatever. But there are times when clearly. DNF happens and um, Alan's actually had two DNFs in one year this year um, for different reasons one was a medical reason one was one was uh, maybe something different that we can that we can talk about but we thought we'd um, have a discussion about that and um, and see where it leads so Alan first of all prior to this year I believe you'd only had one DNF in your whole career is that right? Yeah, that's uh, that's correct. I've been doing triathlon for for now. It's my twelfth year, and I've DNF uh, once before. Uh, so it wasn't to Norseman two thousand and sixteen, where I got uh, a lung edema during uh, during the race or uh, or in in the swim. So the death before DNF, uh, it would probably would have been something I could have tattooed on my forearm uh, because I I really believed that. Uh, Oh, I, I still believe in somehow that that's the mindset you should go into. Like quitting is not an option um, because it just leaves that door closed uh, because it's always uh, part of long races, at least uh, for my case, where you don't want to continue. Uh, but there is uh, definitely cases where you should quit. Yeah, well, let's talk about one of those because earlier this year you were doing a triathlon and you noticed because of your heart rate monitor and how you're feeling, you noticed that you were basically having a heart arrhythmia um, yes. during the race. So talk us through what happened there and what the thought process was and how you decided that it was time to pull the plug on that race. Um, yeah, it's um, it was uh, in a, like very late part of the the bike. I first like no noticed i could that my heart felt like it it felt like I, it was offbeat um so and then i could i checked my heart rate uh, in my watch and it was maybe 15 beats higher than it uh, was just uh, um, a few minutes ago um so that was strange but it was the late part of the race and the race dynamic was we just caught the two front guys on the bike and things eased down so i just kept in the background and had a couple of easy minutes on the bike towards transition and it was all good. Um, and then I started the run and everything was fine then also. And after seven minutes, the, I, I could feel it again. Um, or seven kilometers out on the run. Um, so then uh, I I stopped. I, I I walked a bit, and I was walking with a heart rate of 150 BPM. So that's um, uh, I usually it's around 80 when I'm walking in in that case. So that was that was quite high, and um, and I haven't experienced it before in 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 that way and or in a race. So uh, when I had had the option to cut the cut the route short and and just walk to the finish line and i, I did that because i i tried to to walk again and the heart rate was just uh, right up there um and as i i didn't know what it was it was i just quit which was a good choice yeah oh no i totally agree but how in the moment because you are obviously a, a professional athlete and you've you've managed to do all of those years with basically a, a clean record of getting to the finish line how how does it feel in that moment when you have to make that decision what went through your mind weighing up do i try again or do i you know do i stop yeah that's uh, it's it, it is very frustrating um and uh, as i was in third at um, yeah, at the moment, and and I, I was having a hope that I could uh, could compete for for the victory. 
Um, but when when I got it, uh, it it was even if I, I because I did run with it. Uh, I don't know, maybe a half a kilometer or something like that. But I was running like for forty five minute per kilometer pace, which isn't fast at all, uh, and with the maximum heart rate. So the performance issue, no, the performance, I, I wasn't able to perform. Um, but it's, it is it is quite tough to actually pull the plug. Um, and then you, after I, I did cut the route short, then it was point of no return. And maybe after uh, one and a half kilometers of of walking and very easy running back to transition like you start to feel better and then you start to feel the regret as well so that's uh, it is quite tough but in hindsight it uh, it was it was a good option but in the moment it's it's quite hard to to do yeah and then later in the year you were attacking um the 24 hour cycling world record for the most distance covered you'd to put that in context, you broke the Norwegian record and got relatively close to the world record last year. And this year you'd set up a more sophisticated attempt with a racetrack and support and a, and a plan. And then, but that ended in a DNF after 18 hours. When you'd ridden an incredible distance, you'd ridden at nearly 40 kilometers an hour for 18 hours, but you you pulled the put you pulled the plug at that point. But there were some interesting circumstances going into that one, wasn't wasn't there? Around the fact that someone else had broken the record just a few days before and put it a long way further down the road. And and the weather was quite hot as well, I think, on the day. So tell us what happened around that and how that DNF came about. Yeah, um that's uh, that the DNF uh um i i have uh, uh, have needed more back to thought to to process or why why it happened as as you mentioned like far i think four days before my attempt uh, the record went from 912 to 1026 kilometers uh, which made it from relatively uh, like easy <laughs> to uh, impossible uh, because uh, like on on the the venue i had it which was a racetrack uh, uh at sea level it's uh, it would not have been possible for me to to take in that record i would needed more uh, more power than uh, christopher strasser uh weighing the more than 10 kilo less uh, like it, it it wouldn't have happened um uh, and i knew it um and i knew that i should like call off the world record attempt and instead try to get as far as possible which was yep. originally my goal anyway um but uh, it was it was difficult to to do um and for the team around and for like the enthusiasm did that make you uh, did that did that uh, did that make you push harder than you should have done do you think did you did you abandon your schedule and, and push harder uh yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes that's uh that's the that's the short answer it's like at least i could try it for uh for uh for a few hours and and or oh, for an hour maybe even and see how the pace would go because I haven't I hadn't tried the uh, the race track more than just a, a few laps so it was very difficult to to actually predict what uh, what the speed would be as I I didn't know the rolling resistance and it is difficult to know the uh, I, I, the, the like the wind conditions and and, and just just my my cdf and on, on with the equipment i had as well because i got my race suit half an hour after i planned to start the race yeah um so i just postponed the stuff but uh, anyway so that made me push harder and i started uh, i think 11 or 12 um uh, and which which then was like the the first 
uh, I think seven or eight hours was the hottest of the of the race, which was planned as well to to have the most challenging conditions when you're the fittest. Um, which uh, which was uh, a very good idea, but uh, I should have like it. <laughs> It like it turned out that uh, it was very hot in the beginning, and then um, like it may be twenty five degrees, and on a racetrack the the wind heats up uh, quite uh, quite much, uh, so you get like this warm wind uh, blowing over you, um, and in in the night it was down to ten degrees uh, yeah. Celsius, um, which is uh, uh, quite quite a big difference. So. What I should have done is like start easy and then like save my uh, my my power or uh, for 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 the night when it's coldest yeah. to generate more heat. But now it was I was pushing hardest in the beginning and when it goes cold, my my power output was much lower and those my energy uh, production as well. Yeah. How long, when, when you got to the point of um, stopping at about 18 hours, how long had you been thinking about pulling the plug? Because I assume you don't sort of suddenly decide at one minute that you've had enough. When did you start to think that you might not make it through 24? Mm, yeah, I'm, no, it's, it's been a, it, it was a process. Uh, uh, I don't know, it, not that long. Um, maybe th two or three hours and maybe i didn't or i didn't plan to 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 like like do this full stop but just uh, I, I i i don't know maybe to do a stop and and i because i like i had some big issues with uh, have, uh, being able to pee yeah. Um, so, um, and I had, um, it was probably due to my saddle, um, which, which had more pressure, uh, um, around that area, which like I stopped and tried to pee for a couple of minutes and uh, that was, uh, I wasn't able to do it. So it took mm -hmm. 11 and a half hours out to, in, into the race before I was able to pee. So. That was quite, and, and then I felt I was riding with a half full bladder the the whole yeah. time. Um, so the, I, I got quite tired of that kind of pain, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then I got uh, quite uh, quite big saddle sores as well, um, which which doesn't make it more tempting to to keep on going. <laughs> yeah um, um and but uh, what's what was difficult in after after i quit because then i uh, like i i stopped and uh, uh they say like yeah we, we just just uh, take a take a nice soup of something to eat and then we can try again and that was the plan as well but when I stopped, then I got hypothermic and started to shivering. So then my race was was truly over. Um, so uh, uh, I had a lot of like tools in my toolbox uh, to avoid uh, the DNF. Like uh, the saddle saw could easily be uh, be fixed by uh, by using my spare bike. Yeah. Uh, because my spare bike has uh, have have my old saddle. Uh, which I used for the the previous 24 hour attempt, and the bike is actually identical to my race bike. So it's my it's actually my previous bike with more stack bars and everything. So it's identical, just with another seat. And I could have lowered it for uh, with a couple of centimeters to to make the pressure points different. So and so that that swap would would have taken me 30 seconds. Um, and I could also have uh, put uh, music uh, in my ear because I didn't do that. So to to just like one song is uh, approximately one lap. So I could just uh, uh, yeah try to 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 do that as well and um, and maybe not be in aero position for one lap because then I've been in aero position constantly for eighteen hours. 
So mm. maybe I could try to do a couple of laps just sitting up and 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 try to loosen on my shoulders and neck and um, uh, yeah. So I'm um, I'm quite. I, I would have done it differently, but at the time I quit, I didn't have the the like the mental bandwidth uh, to to actually use the tools I I pre-planned <laughs> to use. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, that's quite and interesting. Think, and that's and and you think that's do you think that's quite common because it's easy to sit and have a rational plan when you're rested and well fed and relaxed and all this, but but putting that plan into place when you're 18 hours in, in a very stressful and painful situation. Do you think that's, you know, how would you, how would you do it differently next time to make sure that you could really use those tools that you, you described? Yeah, I, I think uh, like my pitfall was that I did a 24 hour ride uh, last year uh, with much worse or uh, poor preparation i didn't have any of those issues yeah uh, so i i wasn't i was prepared but not really prepared to to use them so i i like i, I had them planned but it, it wasn't i think ingrained in me i i didn't actually believe i needed them uh, yeah. at some sort so that's uh, like you said like when you when yeah when we are not in the world it's quite easy to 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 be rational but uh, when you're in the moment then that uh, at least uh, you find it more difficult uh, uh, than you might believe yeah pre uh, prior to to the race or to the event it's like when when you see athletes you can see top athletes they're on the bike and they lose their nutrition bottle yeah so, and they just keep on riding instead of like taking those 30 seconds and ride back and pick it up and and go um, and yeah you could see this so many times uh, where that has really punished them later on and and on, you mentioned briefly at the start of the talk about the bike ride that it's taken you a long time to sort of like process what happened and 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 get to grips with a dnf i think that's a common thing that a lot of athletes say is that sometimes it's because it's quite a painful thing to feel like you've quit or given up how how do you reflect on it now and you know do you do you view it with regret or do you view it as a useful experience that you're going to build on what's the what's the sort of abiding feeling that you're left with now after that uh, no uh, no in in hindsight uh um i'm i don't regret it because when when i was 18 hours in and in that moment it it was uh, uh, i i should have maybe previously changed bike to 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 avoid the biggest saddle sore but i i used nearly two or i used two weeks to to heal the saddle sores and norseman was two weeks and three days after the 24 hours went so if i if i continued and and done it that would be like a real challenge further on <laughs> yeah yeah because then i'm probably needed would have needed like medical uh, assistance for for actually getting the the sand sort to heal so it it was a, a right moment in hindsight at that time but uh, but i shouldn't have gone there in the first place um and but I'm not not a guy who who uh, regret that many things because it's very I know that it's very easy to uh, to see what you should have done after the fact. Yeah, and I I also know that's like or yeah, uh, like Daniel Kahneman says that's that's how we human are constructed like after the fact then we see things clearly and then we say oh i should have done it uh, differently yeah. but that's based on facts you didn't know prior to the event so i'm quite good at bringing myself back to to that uh, to that fact and say that uh, i wasn't uh, i wasn't in the mental state to use the tools i had in my toolbox at that moment and that's not a state i've been to before like i i can't collect that so that's it isn't a failure it's it's just a a huge lesson 
Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's the way I see it. And if I hadn't tried it, then I wouldn't have learned it. And it's uh, uh, yeah. So like, and that's the important thing to evolve and to learn and and grow. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think I think that's a common thing to what a lot of athletes that we've spoken to or who have written about it, and it becomes a it becomes a negative, and you know you can't you can't do that. You need to you need to learn from it and put it to one side and, and move move along. So it sounds like you're doing that really well. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, but it, it like that's uh, that's how I how I cope with things or how how I do things. It's uh, it is looking at looking like it's it's not like a success or failure. It's more like an experiment with that outcome, and from that experiment, we learn X and Y. So, uh, and that's and and doing like this twenty-four hour attempt like more seriously. I, I it was a lot I learned from it, and like I was able to ride for thirty-nine point seven kilometers per hour for. 18 hours uh, with an average of what what around 200 uh, some uh, 200 and, yeah less than 200 220 so and that's that's superb speed for uh, for yeah. the watts so and 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 that process wouldn't have i wouldn't have gotten that result uh, like randomly so uh, of course that's uh, that's something to to bring along as well yeah Awesome. Well, like you say, I know I know you well now, and I think you are the sort of bloke that does does these incredible, crazy experiments. I know you and, and learns from and moves on. I know you're doing a 24 hour running race later this year, so excited to see how that goes. Yeah, yeah I'm excited as well. But this this time, I'm I, I don't think I had so much fear for a race. So the one I'm doing now is like, yeah, that's going to be hard. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well we'll be we'll be there to support you and see how you and see how you get on so thanks for yeah. talking to us about about that yeah. today it's been really useful yeah thanks for the support and uh and uh, the the nice chats thanks alan see you later all right